name is Allison Miller. I'm here with Fabersonic today at Rapid 2019. Let's go check out and see the exciting new technology here at the show. Come on. So we do stuff in, you know, dental, engineering, rapid prototyping, uh, the medical field, just you know, all, all of these, like, like all of those can benefit anywhere where someone needs a physical part. Are there uh, any exciting collaborations that you've worked on? In the uh, yeah, actually, yeah. So right here, um, so Gillette. Uh, who's also a Boston-based company, um, 
created a, a website called Razor Maker. Okay. And basically you can go online, pick the design of your razor blade handle, or if you want to, you can add your own name to it. Oh, wow. Or something like that, whatever you want. And then they will print it on our machines. Like they own it, it's all you know, Gillette's deal. Uh -huh. um, but they'll print it and then uh, send it to you. Yeah, and they also have versions like of these that are metal plated or you know, special collections for the winter or whatever. But you know, they have a wide variety of these different designs um, that are all printed on the exact same machines that we have here. Okay, cool. cool. So, are a lot of your customers using it for like mass customization? Or? Um, that's just how Gillette is using okay. it. Um, a lot of other companies are using it for uh, Oxo used it to prototype you know, spoons and stuff. I just wanted to do, you know, the fit and feel of this before they went to this. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah so, you know, all, all sorts of companies are using it for, for very different reasons. Uh, dental companies or labs are using it to print you know, splints and surgical guides and all sorts of stuff. Uh, models for uh, dentistry and liners and stuff. Yeah. Side by side in a brick laying pattern, we can create net shaped parts. Yeah, so from there, all it is is CNC milling to add the internal geometry or external features um, and deliver final parts. Absolutely. So, getting a metal stop like this, obviously, it's easy to get, um, but also there's some safety advantages, I'm sure, in, really, um, in comparison to a powder bed process where you have to. Exactly. From a safety standpoint, uh, on this machine, it's open atmosphere. There's no shielding gases. There's no vacuum. There's really not too much to worry about. Um, our feedstock is just metal foil, so the worst you have to worry about is really paper cuts. Uh, no worry about explosion or anything like that. Uh, so it's uh, very easy to work with, commercially available. You can buy it for around $10 a pound, um, and it's very easily accessible. So. Can you talk a little bit about the industries we currently serve with our technology and where you really see it heading? Um, so with this system, we're primarily seeing this going into a lot of um, centers focused on additive, developing new additive technologies and finding applications that best suit UAM and compare it to other um, additive processes. So UAM is not the golden bullet. It's not going to solve all the problems of additive manufacturing, but it does have a lot of advantages that are worth taking um, taking into consideration when designing parts. One, we can do embedded electronics because it's a low temperature solid state process, uh, meaning that when we're 3D printing our material to net shape, it never gets above 250 Fahrenheit. So that low temperature means that we can put electronics inside of our parts without crushing them. So we can do temperature, sens temperature sensors, strain gauges, thermal couples, you name it, we can normally weld it into our parts. We can also do in dissimilar materials, 
week because it's a solid state process, so we can mix and match aluminum and copper alloys without having bad intermetallic metallurgy that you would find if you were to melt these materials together um, in other machines. Right, so yeah, you definitely can work with these difficult to work with alloys, which I think is a huge advantage. Are there any alloys that people can start care of or, or that you don't really think work with this process? So, not so much with the process, but there are some machine specific alloys. So this system right here is more geared towards uh, aluminum and copper, which is most of what aerospace is after anyways. Uh, our larger systems, which have about five times the amount of power as this machine, are more capable of doing your nickel, stainless, titanium, moly, invar, you name it, zero combinations. Uh, whereas this one is just more geared towards aluminum, copper, and some other intermixed uh, dissimilar metal combinations. Are there any limitations with the technology that uh, you see, or is it potentially as it comes to have our benefits and other additive technologies have their benefits. Uh, whereas with the powder bag technology, you can do organic shapes. Here we're not doing as many organic shapes because we need to be able to apply a downforce on our parts. Um, that just means that we're not doing organic shapes inside of our machines, but we're okay with that. Because a lot of heat exchangers that we're making aren't that design. Uh, for example, here's a heat exchanger that came off of one of our machines. Uh, so just looking at it, it looks just like a billet milled piece of material. However, if you, if you start thinking about it, we have to 3D print in order to put that internal channel inside of there. So that's that's where the 3D printing really comes to light and improves um, its advantage over other additive technologies. Thank you so much for your time. It's a pleasure.